Hello everybody and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 15. In this tutorial we are going to focus on adding color to our shaders. So in our previous tutorial we had just finished drawing a white triangle and in this tutorial we are going to figure out how we can pass color into the shaders. First let's go to our vertex header. We are going to modify our vertex struct to contain a color. We are going to store a red, green, and blue value, so we will use the XM float 3 data type for three floats. We will change the constructor to take in an RGB value, and then we will initialize the color. Alright, next we need to update our input layout. So let's go to the graphics CPP and find, let's see, it was in our initialized shaders where we were doing that. So right now we currently just have position. We're going to modify that and add an element to store the color. Now, one thing different is the format. Position was two floats, so we used R32, G32. Color will be three floats, so we are using R32, G32, B32. Next is the offset. The first element had an offset of zero since it was the first element. The second element, we are passing in this macro to determine the offset. If we wanted to, we could instead manually calculate the offset, but I don't really see any advantage. We know that the first element is two floats, and there are four bytes each, so we could pass in eight here, and that would work. But I would rather just use the macro in case you change anything in the future, just because I don't, I don't see any reason not to. Alright, so let's review some semantics about HLSL. For example, in our vertex shader, before we had this SV position variable, and this is describing what we are returning from our vertex shader, that specific float 4. Now, for more information on this, all of the variables prefixed with SV are actually uh, system variables. So I pulled up this um, documentation, they're called system values, and basically there are certain fields that get passed in between the stages. So for example, from the vertex shader, we are expected to populate the position, and then that gets passed down to the other stages. And similarly, with the pixel shader, we are expected to set the target for the actual pixel color. Now we want to pass in more information than just the position to our vertex shader. So what we can do is we can actually create structs for, I'm going to call it uh, VS input. This is going to be the input that the vertex shader receives. And we know that we're going to receive a float two for the position. And then we are going to receive a float three for the color. And we had used the uh, semantic name color for that in our input layout. Now we are going to have an output and we will want to pass this information down to the pixel shader. So we know that we are returning a float 4 and it has the SV position semantic. So what we are going to do is create that. We are going to call it out position. And then we also need to um, pass the color, which we are just using a, a float 3 for. And we will use that same color semantic for that. So down here, instead of returning a float 4, we can return a VS output. And we don't need this SV position semantic because we have it up here in our structure. And then for our input, we will get a VS input. I'll just call it input. So we need to declare an output to return. Let's see, we need to set the position. So we know that the position is going to be a float four and we will just call the input position. And then we need to pass in a Z and a W value. So I'll just put uh, 0 for the Z and 1 for the W for now, since we only have a 2D coordinates that we are passing in. 
And then next we need to do the uh, out color. So we would have set that equal to the in color. And lastly, we are returning the output. So our vertex shader is properly set up. However, our pixel shader does not know the data it's going to be getting. So I'm going to copy this output struct and go into the pixel shader. And now in the pixel shader, we're going to keep it returning just a float four. And it's just going to be returning that pixel color. And I'm going to change this from VS output to PS input. It's the pixel shader's input. And we will have that for the argument that it receives. All right. And then for this, we are just going to be returning the uh, color. So we're only storing the red, green, and blue value. So we can pass in the, let's change this to in position and in color. Input, we get the color. And then the last value for color is the alpha, which we are not passing in. So we're just going to return one, which is a, a perfectly solid color. It's not transparent at all. So I believe we are almost ready. But what we have to do next is go down to our graphics CPP, where we are uh, creating our vertices and initialize scene. And we need to modify these because before they just had the X and Y positions and we want to add the red, green, and blue values. Now for this example, I want to draw a triangle and I want to have the uh, bottom left be red. I want the top middle to be blue. And I want the bottom right to be green. And also we are going to change the um, background color just to black because the blue is kind of killing my eyes every tutorial. So one thing is, I didn't mention this in the last tutorial, and we'll get more into this in the next one, but we have to have our points going in clockwise order. So we have to render the red first, and then the blue, and then the green. Or we'd have to do blue, green, red, or green, red, blue, but we couldn't do it backwards. We can't have green first, then blue, then red, if that makes sense. It has to be clockwise. So for the red, we are going to use the coordinates negative 0.5 for the x, since it's to the left of the center, and then we will go down to negative 0.5 for the y. For the green, we will go to positive 0.5 for the x, and then negative 0.5 for the y. And for the blue, we will just do 0 for the x, and then let's try 0.5 for the y. So let's put in these vertices. All right, so now we have our three vertices laid out. Let's change the background color by going to render frame and just changing the blue value in our RBG to be zero. So we have zero for red, green, and blue. We should get black. Let's test this out and see what this looks like. All right, and there we go. We got exactly what we had expected. Now, just to demonstrate something before ending the tutorial, let's go back to our vertices and let's try changing the order of this. So currently we are drawing it clockwise. We're starting at the left and then we're going to the top middle and then we go to the bottom right. However, what if we started at the top middle and went down to the left and then to the right, which would be counterclockwise. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we get nothing. So this is just showing that it has to be clockwise for the default rasterizer settings. Now, in the next tutorial, we are going to go over how to set up our rasterizer state and how we could change that if you for some reason wanted to. But that is all that we are going to cover for right now.